Today we're going to talk about how to find an RPG game to join. Let's get started. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Joe, and welcome to Tabletop Theory, where we talk about educational theory, counseling theory, and role-playing games, and how putting all of those things together can help make you a better storyteller. Today I wanted to give a tip to some players, and maybe some GMs out there, that might be looking for their first or next group. Sometimes looking for players can be hard, sometimes players looking for a GM can actually be even harder. So, what I wanted to do today is go over a couple of different places and a couple of different ways that I've found that actually work pretty well to find games. And yeah, I've been playing since Bush the First was in office, but at the same time, it's important to know that a lot of these different ways really haven't changed that much. Yes, we have the internet now, yes, we have Google, but there are so many good ways to actually find a role-playing game group. I wanted to put them together and use it as a resource to help you guys. Some of these tips actually are really important, but the thing to remember is safety. You're meeting strangers. You don't necessarily know who they are. You might be going somewhere that you've never been before. So here's a couple of tips to keep yourself safe. Number one, if you're going somewhere new, don't go alone. And if you are going somewhere alone, let somebody know where you're going. Let them know when you're getting there. Let them know when you expect to return. Let them know who you're going to see. Yeah, this might seem a little bit overprotective, but at the same time, taking that step really shouldn't take too much time, and it's just an added layer of precaution. I don't want anybody to end up on the back of a milk carton because they decided to go find a role-playing group and then they got kidnapped after this video. I would feel terrible and that person would be kidnapped. Next thing, if you do find a group that you do want to join, ask what kind of game they're going to play. Ask about the people who are going to be there. How old are they? Is their cursing allowed? Will alcohol be present? Do people bring food? Do people not bring food? All of those types of things are pretty important, and the GM should be able to answer most of your questions. The other thing that's always nice to do whenever you're meeting a group for the first time is to bring a small gift. And when I say gift, I mean food. Bring food. Soda, pizza, water, candy, whatever you want to bring, it's really nice to be able to be a part of a group and actually bring something to the table for the first time as a way of an introduction. It doesn't have to be big and extravagant. Just go buy a veggie platter from your local stop and shop. The point is, if you take the time to actually do something small, it can create a lot of goodwill and actual acceptance later. That doesn't mean you have to bribe anybody, it just means that everybody likes a veggie platter. With that being said, let's move on to how to find a group. So the first place that I always recommend that people go and look is the local comic book store. If you have one in your area, great, I'd start there. Go talk to the staff there, let them know what kind of game you're looking for. Chances are they probably know about some people that are actually running a game and maybe looking for players. And some comic book shops actually have house games that they run on a regular basis. That's always the place that I recommend new players that come to me and say, hey, where can I find a group? Go to the local comic book store. And if they don't have one, go to the next one because chances are you're gonna find one there easiest. Next is uh, school. The thing about school is that whether you're in elementary school, middle school, high school, or university, you're going to be able to find a game sometimes using the resources that the school has at your disposal. So if you're not in college but you're still in middle school or high school, go to your school counselor. If you have a conversation with the school counselor and let them know what you're looking for, maybe there's a role-playing group at your school. Maybe they might know where you can find some resources to locate a role-playing group in your particular area. Because I know not every where it's like where I live. Some places you're gonna have a lot less space around you, sometimes you're gonna have a lot more people around you, sometimes you're gonna have almost no people around you and you have to find something online, but you still go to school. And unless you're homeschooled, which if you are, that's cool. If your school counselor doesn't have a list of the different student organizations, chances are they're gonna be able to point you in the direction of the person that does. If you're in university, it's even easier. You're gonna go find somebody who works in what's called the Student Affairs Division, and then you're gonna go find the person in the Student Affairs Division who uh, runs the student organizations for your university. Now, the university that I work at, it's called Student Organizations, but sometimes at other universities, I've heard it called other things. There's a lot of different ways that different universities qualify the people that recognize different students student organizations, but here's a quick tip. Go to the person that organizes the Student Government Association. Whether it's a student or a staff member, whoever that person is is going to be able to get you in contact with whatever professional staff member at the university is the one organizing all of the recognized student organizations on campus. Once you find that person, 
ask about role-playing game groups, because they're probably going to have a list of all the different student orgs on campus, and chances are your college probably has one. Let's talk next about the local library or the community center. If you live in a part of the country or a part of the world that's lucky enough to have a community center or a local library, that's probably a good place to go and look because sometimes libraries actually host role-playing nights. Sometimes they have spots that they set aside for people to go and play Dungeons and Dragons. I've seen this back in the town that I grew up in. I've seen it in the town that I live in now. If they don't have a game going at their library, maybe they're gonna have the resources to be able to point you in the direction of where a game can be found. Here's a tip you probably wanna keep in mind about libraries. Calling over the phone and asking this information may not net you the best results. An in-person visit might benefit you more than just trying to call over the phone because if you call over the phone and you get somebody who doesn't know what Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons or Star Wars is, as odd as it may sound, they might be like, nope, sorry, we don't have that. But in fact, they do. They just might call it something else. So don't get discouraged if you do call and nobody actually has that. You probably wanna go down to the library and actually talk to another person because they're probably going to have more accurate information than whoever's the person answering the phones. The same rule applies for community centers. Some community centers are places where people go to get together and play sports or go swimming or play tennis or whatever, but a lot of community centers also have conference spaces set aside for people to get together and do things like play chess or play role-playing games. You never know. So if your library doesn't have anybody, then try your community center, try a YMCA. There might actually be some groups that meet in those locations or put up notices about looking for players in those locations, and you might just wanna go down there and take a look. So if you're a person of faith and you belong to some kind of religious organization, whether it's a church, a temple, a mosque, whatever it is, chances are that the people in that faith community probably know about some kind of game that's going on. I have a friend who runs a game for his temple. I also have several friends that are pastors and they run games for the local youth groups. It's not the 1980s anymore. Lots of churches don't have this massive ban on Dungeons and Dragons. The satanic panic fortunately is over for most people. People in different faith communities are a lot more receptive to the benefits that role-playing games can provide to the people in their communities. Faith organizations and religious organizations, generally speaking, are around to help support people and to benefit their lives. So if you have a group that you can contact, give it a try. You might be surprised with what you come up with. So let's talk about online. The offerings online have exploded. I remember I talked about a game that I found using meetup.com and uh, that's probably still a thing, but I know there's better options now. So let's talk about Reddit. There's a really good subreddit card r slash LFG, looking for group. That's a great place that people go pretty frequently to post up things for online games, in-person games, and other types of things that where either players are looking for groups or there's GMs looking for players. It's an option that you can use if you're on Reddit and if you're not on Reddit, maybe just go there as an anonymous browser and see what's up. Maybe there's something that would benefit you and actually scratch that role-playing itch that you've been trying to get scratched. The other place that you can look that I've seen and I do use occasionally is Roll20. I use Roll20 to run some of my games, but I do know that they also have a way for players to find games whenever GMs create something and open it up to new players. Now, the other thing I'll say about Roll20 is that I'm not affiliated with them and they're not paying me to say this, so this is just my own information and experience. Uh, it does fill up quickly. Sometimes people tell me that the games that they've been looking for on Roll20 fill up almost immediately and they have to keep looking for several days or several weeks even sometimes to be able to find a game that actually will accept them as a new player. So the thing to remember is that don't get discouraged with Roll20 because even if it fills up quickly, there's more than enough games that seem to cycle through that place pretty frequently where eventually you're going to be able to find something. If you wanna play online, I'd start there. And last but not least, my personal favorite recommendation. If all the other places that I've talked about previously don't pan out and you're still not able to find a group, then here's what I'd do, start your own game. It might seem daunting, it might seem ridiculous, and yeah, it might seem trite for me to say that, and you might not feel prepared, but it's okay. It's a lot easier than you might be thinking. And the thing is, once you start running a game and you get some players, you're probably gonna meet some people that will eventually offer to run a game and then you can play in that game. I've met people that way, I've had lots of friendships that started that way, and I have friendships that continue to this day, several decades later, because of me offering to run a game and meeting people that are new. So that's important to keep in mind. It's always an option to start your own game. 
So that's all I've got. It's a short one today, but I still wanted to talk about it because sometimes finding a game can be really hard, especially if you're new to the hobby and you don't know where to start. So that's who I really made this video for. If you're a player or a soon to be player or an aspiring player, give these tips a shot and let me know if it works out. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter or let me know down here in the comment section if there's a place that I forgot about. If there's something that I didn't mention that you think would be a great resource for players looking for a new game, drop it in the comment section here because I'm willing to bet there are a lot of players who would benefit from having that kind of connection. I wanted to talk about breathing because it's something that is important and all of us do it every day and it's how we survive. When we're young in the United States, uh, we're taught to breathe and it's to raise it from your chest. Actually, there's a better way. Breathing the correct way or breathing with your diaphragm, which is a muscle that lives right about here, um, actually might seem a little goofy and it might make you feel like you look a little weird, but it actually allows you to take much longer, deeper breaths. And instead of breathing from your chest, try breathing from your stomach. And the reason I'm over here is because when I do, it makes me look like I'm fatter, but at the same time, my diaphragm is pushing down on my stomach, but it's also expanding my lungs and I'm grabbing my chest a lot and I'm sure I'm bumping the microphone. So if you're trying to learn how to take deep breaths for something like meditation, don't breathe from your chest. Don't do that because all you're doing is arching your back. Try breathing from your stomach. So taking a deep breath and feeling your stomach expand and then when you breathe out, your stomach's gonna contract. So you're actually breathing from your abdominal muscles. It sounds a little quirky, but at the same time, it actually makes a big benefit. If you can take longer, deeper, stronger breaths, it helps you to take deeper breaths when you're in a situation when you feel like you need to calm down. And it's just generally good life advice if you feel like you wanna learn how to breathe a little bit deeper. Because after all, we all gotta breathe, right? Thank you so much for watching. Take care, be kind, and have fun adventuring.